welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having fantastic good Fridays. Just finished up Clay and Buck. Going to do this maybe on Sean Hannity later, but really, this is not going to stun any of you. I am all locked in on the Sweet 16 and whether my beloved University of Tennessee can finally win a Sweet 16 game like Alabama did last night. Talk a little bit about that. Tennessee 1-8 and eight all time in Sweet 16 games. Last two Sweet 16 games under Rick Barnes, favored against Purdue, favored against FAU, lost both, favored now by two and a half. It's the last number that I've seen against Creighton. Uh, I'll be up late. Why in the world are these games going to go on until midnight? I don't know, but I'll be up uh, late watching these games. I got some prize picks for you. Prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, over 3 million members. And unlike other apps, prize picks is just you against the number, no sharks, no competitive leagues. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks you can turn 10 bucks into a thousand dollars whether tournament season fight for playoff home court no shortage of high stakes uh, going on right now you can get hooked up prize picks has something for everybody whether it's women's college basketball men's college basketball nba hockey uh and certainly with uh, the masters coming up we got golf going on everything out there for you major league baseball season starts today for many teams including my atlanta braves uh started yesterday for many teams as well uh, i'll give you my prize picks picks coming up in a minute but i want you to know uh right now download the prize picks apps and use the code outkick and you can get up to a hundred dollar first deposit match that is you put in a hundred they'll double your money give you another hundred dollars pick more pick less it's that easy all right uh let me go ahead and dive in here I want to start, some of you may have heard me talking about this in the last hour on uh, Clay and Buck, but it really struck me as I was getting ready for the radio show today and as I was doing a lot of my prep work, um, I, I, couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't stop thinking about American history, which you guys know I'm a big American history nerd, and I, I was reading uh, a thread talking about the power that America had in the wake of uh, 1945 after Hiroshima and Nagasaki dropping the bomb in Japan. And I couldn't stop thinking about it in the context of this weekend with it being Easter and how, to me, those are connected and how they directly refute the idea of America's history being one of uh, turmoil, tempest, and uh, an awfulness, which is what many on the left want to say and what many, unfortunately, young college kids believe today. And I was thinking about that particular crucible, that moment in time. When America dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we had the opportunity at that point to take over the entire world. Never has there been a point in time where one group of people have had the ability to conquer the entire world. Never has there been more power than the United States had in the summer of 1945. We could have taken over the entire world. We were more powerful than Caesar ever was, more powerful than Alexander the Great, Hannibal, the Chinese uh, empires, uh, the English empire, the Spanish empire, the Italian uh, apex Roman, Greeks, you name it. No one has ever been more powerful in the history of the world than America in the summer of 1945. We could have, due to our ability to bomb any country in the world, demanded that every nation, that every city, that every people bend the knee to us, and we could have become global dictators. Do you know what we did? We allowed Japan to rebuild and allowed and permitted and gave our money to Japan to rebuild, and we gave our money to Germany to rebuild. We put the Marshall Plan in place. We allowed the countries that we defeated in World War II that were motivated by evil, we extended a hand to them and allowed them to build something new out of the destruction that we had uh, levied upon them to win the war. We extended our hand to them in friendship. We could have demanded that they become basically our subsidiaries. 
We could have taken them over. We could have become authoritarians. And I think that's uniquely connected to this weekend and it being Easter because that's a profoundly Judeo-Christian idea that no one should be defined by evil and that there is the possibility for redemption even for people who have made poor choices, even for people who would, as the Nazis would have and as the Japanese would have, even for people who would have chosen, if they could, to rule the entire world. We believe that they were capable of redemption. Western civilization is good. I think it's very important for everyone to study American history and not to allow a bastardized version of American history to be embedded in your brains, which is what unfortunately has happened, I think, to lots of young people in this country. America is the greatest force for good that has ever existed in the history of the world. America is not perfect, but it is the greatest force for good that has ever existed in the history of the world. And to me, Going back in time to 1945 and thinking about it, and I was thinking about it in the context of this being Easter weekend, is a perfect representation of that. Eighty some odd years ago, the United States could have taken over the entire world, both friend and foe alike. Russia would have bent the knee. All of Europe, all of Asia, certainly all of Latin America. Everyone was terrified of the power that we had unleashed at Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end the war in the Pacific. And with all of that power and with all of that ability to take over and rule the entire world to make them our effective subjects, we extended a hand and rebuilt countries that had tried to overthrow us based on authoritarian evil motives. We treated them with the idea of respect and redemption, which is embedded in the Judeo-Christian culture. And everybody out there who is arguing that America is evil and that America is racist and that America's history is bad, everyone out there making that argument is doing so based on the foundational principles of Western civilization, which have allowed capitalism, Republican forms of government, and basic freedom of press and freedom of speech to exist. It is only with the successes of Western civilization, ironically enough, that the criticisms of Western civilization can come. You use the creations of their munificence to try to tear them down. And I just think that it is such an interesting and crucible moment in American history and indeed world history to contemplate that and so, look, I'm going to get into the Sweet 16. I'm going to tell you who I think is going to win. But based on how the gambling picks are going right now, I'll probably lose all of you money. That's all fun and games and frivolity. Sports are the toy chest of life. What happened 80 years ago, 79 years ago to be exact, no country has ever been more powerful than America in the summer of 1945. And I believe because of our Judeo-Christian ethics, instead of continuing to hammer the people that we defeated with our fist. We extended them a hand, and we rebuilt their economies to such an extent that there was a concern in the 1980s that Japan was going to pass the United States. And there was a concern that Western Europe, that Germany, that all these other countries that we helped to build back up in the wake of the war, that they were going to end up surpassing us. Now, they haven't, and they won't, so long as we can maintain committed to American ideals and values. But I do think it's such an important message to send on this weekend of all weekends, on this day of all days, on this Good Friday. And much less serious now, congratulations Alabama, UConn, Illinois, and Clemson on your wins yesterday. We only went one and three in the gambling picks. I thought that down the stretch, Alabama – was absolutely incredible, um, and uh, and I dove in and uh, and said, uh, if you go back and look at that down the stretch performance, it was absolutely phenomenal how good Grant Nelson was. He just completely took over the game, and I was making, I was watching the game with, unfortunately, he's a Bama fan, my 13 year old, 
And during the SEC basketball tournament, I was watching with another buddy down in Florida. My 13-year-old was there. We were in a sports bar. And, uh, and my 13-year-old said, Dad, Grant Nelson is dating Sidney Sweeney. And, uh, and Sidney Sweeney, of course, uh, actress, very famous right now. No uh, exaggeration here. Spectacular boobs, which has a lot to do, I think, with her fame. Gorgeous girl. I don't know, 25, 26, whatever she is. And I said, I don't think that's true. And my buddy said, I don't think that's true either. Like, why would she be dating a random Alabama basketball player? And I said, I think what people say is when somebody's on fire right now, They'll say, and oh, by the way, he's also dating Sidney Sweeney. I think that, that may be a more popular meme. You guys may have heard it before. I haven't. I looked it up. It is true. Um, and so last night, I don't know, about midnight, whatever time it was, when Alabama officially beat North Carolina, my 13-year-old turned to me and he said, Dad, Grant Nelson's definitely going to date Sidney Sweeney now. So I just thought that was a good line. Uh, so he was ecstatic. We're watching the games. UConn looks unbeatable. By the way, I'm not sure that it matters on that side of the bracket. Congratulations to Clemson pulling off the big upset over Arizona in an Arizona Wildcat full arena, right? I mean, just an absolute packed Arizona Wildcat crowd. That was a great win. And then Illinois outlasting Iowa State uh, down the stretch to advance to an Elite Eight as well. That side of the bracket is set. Here is what I believe is going to happen on the other side of the bracket. And Kelly Stewart and I, Kelly uh, in Vegas, and I have already talked about this. Um, I think NC State covers the six and a half against Marquette. Uh, I think Gonzaga covers the five and a half against Purdue. Um, I like the Duke-Houston over 133 and a half. And I've got my beloved University of Tennessee Volunteers beating Creighton and covering the two and a half those are my sweet 16 picks for tonight. At some point, just raw numbers, I'm going to have to start to hit on some wins here. Uh, but those are my picks right now. Uh, also, Friday picks uh, for prize picks. Uh, you can go to prizepicks.com, code OUTKICK, also code CLAYWORKS. You get $100 you put in. They'll give you back $100. I've got DJ Burns, who has been the engine behind the NC State uh, offense, over that is more than 14 and a half points uh, in that game against Marquette I think that Zach Eady under that is less than 25 and a half uh, I think that Gonzaga will have some success limiting his touches and will try to keep him from being the fulcrum that dominates this game I am going less than 25 and a half for Zach Eady Josiah Jordan James Bit of an enigmatic player, fifth-year senior for Tennessee. He played well against Texas. I think he will play well against Creighton. Mid-range game should be open for him. I've got more than seven and a half points that he will score. And Zakai Ziegler, more than 20 and a half on points, rebounds, and assists. That is Zakai Ziegler, more than 20 and a half on points, rebounds, and assists. You bet those four. You make your picks on that quad, and it will turn $10 into $100 if we hit, $100 into $1,000. It pays 10 to 1. Again, DJ Burns over, Zach Eady less, Triple J more, and Zakai Ziegler more. Those four are my picks on prizepicks.com. Use my name, Clay. Use the code uh, OUTKICK and or clay at pricepicks.com you'll get up to a hundred dollars with no restrictions uh, okay a couple of other things that are out there um i saw this story and i just had to flag it because i thought it was so utterly ridiculous um on fox sports radio rob parker who is on fox sports radio i like rob good guy rob parker said that he believed iowa women's basketball player Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA and do well this is no hyperbole attached the single most ridiculous and absurd argument of the year so far in sports there is a zero percent chance that Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA at all in fact if Caitlin Clark played in an NBA game 
the only way she would ever score is if she were fouled somehow because somebody jumped up to block her shot and hit her hand, or they just decided not to cover her. I do not believe she could dribble and get a shot off in an NBA game. This is maybe the most ridiculous argument that I have heard in years in the world of sports media. This is bonkers. Caitlin Clark, listen to me carefully, could not start on a state champion boys high school team in any big state in America. Texas, Florida, California, Georgia, North Carolina. Maybe she could start on like a Wyoming or North Dakota team. I even would doubt that. The idea that she could play in the NBA is the single most ludicrous argument that could be made in 2024 in the world of sports. And it is an example of identity politics triumphing over basic reality and facts. I would love to see this happen. I would like to see Caitlin Clark play in the big three. I think she got offered $5 million by Ice Cube. I don't think that's a bad move. Caitlin Clark could not start on a top state champion high school boys team period. She could not play on any men's basketball team in America that is hoping to make the NCAA tournament. Every single bench player on any men's NCAA tournament team right now would destroy Caitlin Clark in a game of one-on-one. The Farthest down the bench, white scrub walk-on on any team in college basketball would cook Clay- Caitlin Clark one-on-one, and it would be an embarrassment to her. This idea of her playing in the NBA, I would love to see it happen. I would welcome it with open arms because it would be such a debacle that they would never allow it to happen. Remember, you're looking at your guy. I put a million dollars of my own money down. I said to the Las Vegas Aces, hey, I'll put a million dollars on every uh, a boys high school state champion team of my choice head-to-head against you guys. You're the WNBA champs. The boys team would wreck them. It would not be remotely close. The argument that Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA is the single most ludicrous, absurd, ridiculous, identity politics-laden sports argument that I have seen made so far in 2024. It's so ridiculous that I felt compelled to call it out. That doesn't mean that you can't like women's basketball. Women's basketball, however, is a pale approximation of men's basketball because men are bigger, stronger, and faster than women. And even the best women's basketball players would get dominated, destroyed, and would be faced with a debilitating defeat if they competed against men beyond a shadow of a doubt. All right. Happy Easter to all of you. I hope you have a fantastic time watching the games tonight. Thank you for consuming all of our OutKick content. Thanks for watching Clay and Buck. Thanks for listening to Clay and Buck. I'm going to put up my gambling picks. I know we've been taking a bunch of losses on the chin, but hopefully we're going to get the rhythm going back a little bit here. But I want to say again, happy Easter, happy Good Friday to all of you. I want all of you to have fabulous weekends and my charge to all of you, read American history and understand how you're being lied to about Western civilization, about the history of America, and about where we are today. Because if the history uh, lies are told to you, then you will use them, unfortunately, many young people will, to try to denigrate American values and to attack our, what I believe is, history, which is the shining light of all histories in the history of of the world. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. I am Clay Travis and this my friends has been Outkick the show.